I, I guess uh, another sort of thing to re-emphasize, particularly around sort of contrast usage and radiation, is that I, was, I think saves both, Rianne, what, what's your experience there? Yeah, coming out of this whole contrast shortage now too, I think people maybe realize that they don't need to take so many angios if they have the ability to use IVIS because you're you're finding your your length of the plaque that you want to treat, you're finding the distal and proximal diameters, um, and you're post dilating, and then you're relooking with IVIS to make sure everything looks good, and then you're taking your angio, so you can really minimize it down to maybe your uh, first guider picture and then final guider picture, and you could walk away from a pretty extensive fix with just using what 10 to 15 cc's of contrast with using IVAS appropriately. Yeah. I, I, I think getting people to understand that when you use intracoronary imaging and when you use IVAS, you're actually, it's, it's the equivalent of getting infinite number of angiograms, right? Because mm -hmm. you've got a 360 degree view. Yeah. So it's magic in that type of manner when you think of it that way. And when you get people to think about it like that, they start realizing you know, using eight to 10 cc's for every different view, they're only getting a snippet of what's going on in the vessel. Yeah. Yeah, and I think, I mean, really the hazard that we uh, can't emphasize enough is the unrecognized calcium. Um, you know, we see that in, in XL at, at Noble, we, when we did the core lab for Noble, uh, the, as the arcs increase, basically the stem areas decrease and that's when you get to the lower tertiles and, and the adverse events increase. And our ability from angiographic views to, to recognize which bits of calcium are gonna be problematic or uh, need treated, it's really a huge, huge underrepresentation, and we, we just don't understand from the angiogram alone. So I would really appeal to people to, to really consider carefully what they're doing within the coronary and to adopt very meticulous practice. It, it, from a pullback perspective, do you guys do manual or do you prefer to have the, the um, automated, the mechanized pullback? And, I like and, the automated because then I can get a real good idea of my stent length that I'm going to need. Yeah. 100% agree with that. You're not going to, otherwise it's a little bit more difficult. And once you get the lab kind of routinely being able to set things up efficiently, it, it you don't lose much time. I, I would argue it is a standard of care as well. Uh, and I think you can then increase how meticulous your PCI becomes. You can actually avoid stent overlap at large branches. You can make smarter decisions. And, you know, there's, there's a whole series of things that, that can be much better informed. And it doesn't take that much longer. It just gives you better information. So if you're doing it, why, you know, why, why would you sort of leave stuff on the table? It doesn't, it doesn't make an awful, an awful lot of sense to me.